let me adjust my seat here. Hi, I'm Kaylee, and today we're looking at my Agatha Christie TBR. to show you guys and to talk about but before we jump into that I actually want to reach back here to our booktuber shout out book and we are going to subscribe to somebody today Jess Book Girl TV oh wonderful I love her channel so you will see the um, link to Jess Book Girl TV down in the description and probably up here someplace I don't know and you should definitely go and follow that link and check her out so back in January I decided to do the read Christie 2021 and there's a list of different prompts and everything um, of different topics that you can check off as you read 12 Christie books in 2021. And there are things like a story set in a grand house, a story featuring love, a story set before World War II, a story set after World War II, a story featuring tea, a garden, a vicar, the seaside, a school, you know, all kinds of different stuff. My favorite is a story set on a mode of transport because we all know we love a good murder on the Orient Express, don't we? <laughs> so at the beginning of the year, when I decided to do this challenge, I thought, oh, I'll just pick them at random and I'll just, you know, I'll just pick one up whenever or something. But recently I decided, no, I, I just want to go ahead and just set a specific TBR and put these books aside in a little spot and be like, these are the books, this is what I'm reading. So the first one I've already read, it's the three act tragedy. I read that last month and I did a book review of it in my February wrap up. So I will link that down below and probably up above someplace so that you can hear all of my thoughts about the three act tragedy. I loved it. It was amazing. It was like, oh, classic Christy. Mwah, chef's kiss, beautiful, we love it. So I actually can't decide though, if I want three act tragedy to be the one um, starring a vicar because, well, he's not technically a vicar. I think he was just some sort of minister. Um, so does it have to be specifically a vicar or does it have to, can it just be like a clergyman? Anyway, I don't know. Um, but it was also in a grand house and it was also by the seaside. So, hmm, I'm not sure which one I want this to count towards. So I guess we'll just kind of see what else I read this year and then... <laughs> I don't know, at the end of the year, I'll decide which one applies to which prompt or something. So, whatever. Another one that I want to read is A Pocket Full of Rye. This is a Miss Marple mystery. And I don't read as much Miss Marple as I do Poirot. I tend to be like, Poirot, I want that one. But I definitely want to dive into more Miss Marple. I do like Miss Marple, and I feel like maybe if I read more of her mysteries, I would probably like her more. The Regatta Mystery and Other Stories is a collection of short stories and it has Poirot and Miss Marple and Parker Pine. So it's just kind of a big blob of all the different peoples. This has nine um, short stories in it. So this might be a fun one to be like, just, you know, kind of draw, draw it out more and like read one short story every week you know, for, for a couple of months or something like that. Just get like a little, a little smattering of Agatha Christie into your day. The next one I have is actually not an Agatha Christie novel. It's a book about Agatha Christie. Aha. It's called The Mysterious World of Agatha Christie, The Queen of Crime and the Duchess of Death. An intimate backstage look at the working methods of the greatest puzzle weaver of all time. Aha. So I feel like if I'm going to be reading all this Christie, I need to really know something about Agatha Christie. I've never read a biography of her or anything. I mean, I know a little bit about her just from like, you know, Wikipedia or something. And I did a video all about her a while back. So I did a little bit of research and just kind of reading around, you know, about her life. But I've never actually read a book about her life. So that needs to happen. The next one is The Murder at Hazelmore. I don't think this is any of the um, famous detectives, like this isn't Poirot or Miss Marple or anybody. It says Major Burnaby discovers the body, Inspector Narricot for the police. So I don't recognize any of those people. Is Burnaby like a, a person that we should know? <laughs> I haven't read enough Christy yet to know all the people. So this will be fun. This will be interesting. I have read some of her stories that are not 
you know, not Poirot, not Miss Marple, like I guess you would say standalones, you know? So I do enjoy her standalones because she's so good at introducing all those great characters, you know? I think this one will be great. Black Coffee is a Hercule Poirot, so you know I'm gonna love it. I think this was originally a play, but this is a novelization of the play because it actually says adapted as a novel by Charles Osborne. Um, I'm not really sure how I'm gonna like that because like I guess the play, Agatha Christie wrote the play and then somebody else wrote a novelization of it. I'm, I'm not sure about that. Well, you know what? We're gonna try it. It's gonna be fine. I just really hope that it captures that writing style of Agatha Christie's and there's something so fascinating in her work where she just draws you in to the story, you know? So um, I'm hoping this will be okay. If you've read this one or, or some other novel adaptation of Black Coffee, uh, leave me a comment down below and let me know, did it still have that Christie flavor? Whenever someone asks me, what is your favorite Agatha Christie? I always say, the man in the brown suit. However, I have not read this in like a couple of decades, okay? I think the last time I read this was in college. That's a while back. Oh boy, so I am seriously overdue for a reread. And I'm a little nervous because we're gonna find out. Is this really my favorite Agatha Christie? Am I like remembering it with rose colored glasses? Uh, am I remembering it accurately? I mean, I'm sure there are many details that I've forgotten. Wow, I, whoo, this is, this is making me nervous. Okay. <laughs> By the way, I hate this cover. That is just like, that's such an ugly cover. <laughs> I hate it. If you have read this one, please let me know. Is it one of your favorites? Do you remember it favorably? <laughs> this one is gonna be really interesting. It seems like lately, every time that I've reread something that I read many years ago, my opinion of it has changed. Like with Mansfield Park and like with Northanger Abbey. Um, those used to be two that I did not like as much. And then it really won me over. The second time or third time that I read them, I really enjoyed them so much more. So hopefully this will age well and this will still speak to me the way it did back then. And Hopefully I will still love it because if I don't still love it, I'm gonna be really heartbroken. I really, really hope this is as good as I remember. Murder in the Links, Murder on the Links is another Hercule Poirot, which apparently takes place on a golf course. Blood stained the sand where his butchered body was found. Oh, it sounds delightful. Poirot could not resist the challenge of a tournament of death with the brilliant mocking killer. Ha <laughs> ha, that sounds fantastic. Oh my goodness, I love it, I love it. I just adore Poirot so much. I wonder if maybe I'll learn something about golf. I really know nothing about golf, so that might be interesting as a setting. Now, if only they had a prompt that said, a story featuring golf, <laughs> that would be perfect. <laughs> Another Hercule Poirot is Funerals Are Fatal. Now this is one, as I'm sure many of these are actually on my list here, that has two different titles. So, so many of the times when Agatha Christie's novels are published by American publishers, they change the title and I don't know why they do that and it drives me crazy because then I look on Goodreads and I'm like, Oh no, I can't find this book. You know, oh, it's cause it's under a different title, dork. Ugh. I had that problem when I read Three Act Tragedy because it also has another title. I forget what it is, but um, it had another title and I'm just, I'm getting tired of it, people. So apparently this one is about a family and they just all seem to be dropping dead, um, you know, murdered and poisoned and all kind of different stuff. And uh, the family solicitor can't figure out why they all keep dying and he calls in Poirot. I just can't get away from Poirot. This one is Peril at End House. This one says three near fatal accidents in three days as Miss Buckley told of her narrow brush with death. The famous detective, Hercule Poirot, felt a thrill of fear. Ooh, if it's making Poirot scared, oh my goodness, we're all in trouble. <laughs> So the cover shows poison being injected into some chocolates. Aha! Why is that always a thing, poison in the chocolates? Like, 
nobody ever gets poisoned by their soup or their salad or something. It's always the chocolates. Or it's the cocktail, one or the other. The chocolates or the cocktail, that's the poisoning. The boomerang clue is another one that is not any of our famous detectives. It's just kind of a standalone, I think. I mean, I don't see anything on here that says, you know, Poirot this or Miss Marple that. So, hmm. So a man named Bobby Jones witnesses a dying man's last words. Why didn't they ask Evans? Ooh, mysterious. Last words. A cunning killer is out to do them in. Why is it that I am getting like so gleeful and giggly about murder? Oh my goodness. I think I get excited because of the puzzle aspects that I know are going to be in there. Like the, the, the psychological puzzle and then also just the physical puzzle of how did they do it and what was their motivation. And it, that's what fills me with glee is I love puzzles and it's Christy. So I know it's going to be fantastic. The murder part does not fill me with glee. The puzzle part does. <laughs> this one is another Miss Marple. It's at Bertram's Hotel. So I'm just kind of, I'm kind of flipping through this to see what it's about and everything. And then I noticed the dedication it says for Harry Smith, because I appreciate the scientific way he reads my books. Oh, isn't that just the best dedication? That is so cool. The scientific way. Isn't that just so Agatha Christie? Like that is just, man, I love it. Very cool. And our last one is the mystery of the blue train. This is probably going to be my mode of transport uh, prompt that I'll be able to check off. A man with a mask, rubies far too fabulous to wear, an unhappy couple each having an affair, and a case of murder for Hercule Poirot. <laughs> this one sounds absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to dive into some of these. So one of the things that I think is really cool in these old editions are the colors of the pages. Most of these I got from my local used bookshop. So, um, you know, they're all kind of messed up and the, and the edges are grimy and stuff. But somehow, to me, this is part of the Agatha Christie experience reading it in some old beat up paperback, you know, that's from years gone by. The only one that I have that's kind of like a little bit of a newer edition is this one. And it's just kind of like, eh, whatever. It's just not the same. Like it's not aesthetically the same when it's a nicer cover or something. Is that dumb? I don't know why I feel that way. Maybe it's just like, it's just my habit that when I read a Christie, the cover looks like this, you know what I'm saying? And the pages have the little, you know, coloring on the edges. And this edition is from like 1952, okay? No wonder it's so beat up. And it says on the cover that it cost $1.95. <laughs> Okay, let's see. This one says 1974, the 29th printing, and it says it's 95 cents. Somehow to me, this is just, this is part of the Christie experience. This one actually has a little flap in the middle where you can, you can fill it out and you can request more Christie books. You have to mail in your request. <laughs> So leave me a comment and let me know, is reading Christie books in old editions from the 50s, 60s, and 70s part of your Christie experience? Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just kind of, that's how most of my Christie books look. And so that's just kind of become like my thing. <laughs> Please leave me a comment down below and let me know, are you participating in the Agatha Christie challenge this year? Or are you going to be, you know, ticking off all of those prompts? And let me know what is your favorite Christie book? And if you reread it years later, did you still love it? Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and remember the right book in the right hands at the right time can change the world.